The world is eagerly awaiting the Starship flight, and for the people of Texas, the anticipation is heating up. In the past, the Texas government wholeheartedly supported SpaceX. Now, as SpaceX once again faces drama from the FAA, state legislators have spoken out, urging the FAA to ease regulations for SpaceX. Could this be the key to unlocking the path for the fifth flight and many more in the future? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech, and thank you for joining us. Amid the ongoing delays keeping Starship grounded due to FAA regulations, opposition has emerged. Beyond the widespread criticism from the space community and aerospace industry, members of Congress have also voiced their disapproval of the FAA's handling of the situation. Besides the points we covered in the previous episode, a notable recent development involves a congressman from the House Foreign Affairs Committee who represents Texas's 3rd District. He sent a letter to the FAA's admin, Mike Whitaker, strongly encouraging him to expedite the environment environmental review process for SpaceX's ops in Texas. After this info was made public, it garnered significant attention. Elon briefly responded to two tweets referencing Congressman Self's letter saying, much appreciated and cool. Even we felt a sense of relief knowing that there's still a lot of support for SpaceX. Many media outlets have pointed out that the claim that SpaceX is polluting the environment is absurd, especially considering that all other launch service providers discard their rockets, along with any unburned, potentially toxic fuel into the ocean. Except for SpaceX, which even after a decade is the only company brave enough to build a reusable, outperforming every competitor, including global superpowers. And to this day, SpaceX is a company with global influence, playing an important role in maintaining the U.S.'s leading position in the space race. In Congressman Self's letter, he stated, Our nation must maintain our commitment to leading the world in the responsible and constructive use of space through an innovative commercial industry. And U.S. leadership in this area is dependent on an agile, efficient regulatory system that promotes and enables rapid commercial innovation. Indeed, if the U.S. wants to stay as top dog, its regulatory management has to at least match the pace of the industry's development. But the FAA's restrictive stance on SpaceX's Starship launch process has created significant barriers to the company's ambitious plans. Although SpaceX demonstrated readiness for multiple launches, including the highly anticipated Flight 5, environmental and regulatory reviews by the FAA have led to frustrating delays. These delays not only affect SpaceX's immediate launch schedule, but also threaten the company's long-term goals, like increasing the annual launch cadence from Starbase Texas, which is crucial for advancing both the Starship program and the broader U.S. space industry. We are unable to restrict or regulate our adversaries. We can only out-innovate them. Yes, China is aggressively making strides in their space program. And as we can see, they are closely following what SpaceX does. Why? So they can copy, catch up, and use the very innovations that SpaceX has pioneered to keep the U.S. surpassing everyone else. This risk is growing as many companies in China are adapting to vertical landing methods to keep place with reusables. To prevent this, Congressman Keith Self has proposed increasing the number of Starship launches from Starbase from 5 to 25 annually, enabling the development of super heavy lift and global mobility and logistics technology a disruptive technology that changes the calculus for our adversaries series in the Indo-Pacific as well as NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts on the moon ahead of China. Additionally, Congressman Self publicly criticized the FAA for its slow response, highlighting how bureaucratic processes and reliance on media narratives are undermining innovation in the U.S. space sector. He expressed frustration that the FAA seems to have been swayed by unfounded concerns from national media, despite the agency's own environmental reviews indicating that an increase in SpaceX's launch frequency would not harm the environment. Congressman Self's frustration reflects a broader concern, once again tied to China, whose space programs don't face these regulatory constraints and are actually supported by their government. He argues that if the U.S. hopes to stay the leader, the FAA has to overcome this red tape and allow SpaceX to hit its full potential. The entire letter from the congressman representing Texas points out everything that the FAA seems to have overlooked, hoping it serves as a wake-up call for the agency to reconsider its approach. Besides Congressman Self's views, John Cowan, the newly elected mayor of Brownsville, also supports SpaceX. He described the program as the region's most reputable new neighbor. He called the company great partners with whom he shares open lines of communication and a productive and open relationship. While he has not yet met Elon Musk, SpaceX's CEO, he and city manager do meet regularly with Kathy Loiters, the longtime NASA engineer who's now GM at Starbase, and Marcella Cortez, the facility's external affairs representative. 
Cohen described the community's sentiment towards SpaceX and its desire to launch more Starships each year as very positive. Residents are also pleased with the development of the area's LNG industry. Frankly, the top officials of Texas don't favor SpaceX and Elon by accident. They all have their reasons, which is to make their state stronger and more prosperous. The arrival of SpaceX was like a savior for Texas bringing about a remarkable transformation to the state. In 2013, and according to the census, the town of Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas, was the poorest city in the U.S. This was a heartbreaking statistic for Texas officials. However, that same year, SpaceX made its appearance and began driving Brownsville to change. According to the latest info from Cohen, Brownsville is now the leading U.S. city in terms of economic mobility growth. Recent investments in the port of Brownsville and several billion-dollar projects, including SpaceX, the commercial space company, which has invested over $3 billion in its starbase operations near Boca Chica Beach, are continuously elevating the economic standing of the area. According to a 2023 economic impact study, SpaceX pumped in $430 million in operations in Cameron County, said former Brownsville Mayor Trey Mendez. The investment includes wages, constructions, and capital improvements. In 2022, the company added nearly a billion dollars to Cameron County's total economic output while also contributing to continued job growth. Mendez notes that SpaceX has become our largest private employer with 1,600 employees, 71 percent are whom from the Rio Grande Valley, and the company has established a major presence in the city for various operations. Before SpaceX's arrival, Texas already had major universities producing a highly skilled workforce every year. However, at that time, the region didn't have many potential companies for them to grow with. As a result, after graduation, much of the workforce would move to other areas across the country for work. By relocating to this area, SpaceX has created job opportunities for the local workforce. On March 30th, 2021, Elon posted a tweet with the content, please consider moving to Starbase or Greater Brownsville, South Padre area in Texas and encourage friends to do so. SpaceX is hiring needs for engineers, technicians, builders, and essential support personnel of all kinds are growing rapidly. This tweet has given great inspiration to the workforce in Texas. At that time, Elon announced he and SpaceX donated $20 million to Cameron County Schools. These are great contributions to help improve the county's education system, creating better conditions for educational institutions to train a high-quality labor force who can choose to come back and contribute to SpaceX or any other company in Texas. As we know, SpaceX is a large company, and its employees get high salaries. And this income helps Texas residents improve their family lives. Not only do SpaceX employees benefit, but workers at other companies also get better compensation. According to an employee at a local manufacturing company, SpaceX's high wages have led local businesses to increase their own employees' salaries. Moreover, tourism activities have also seen an uptick. SpaceX enthusiasts frequently gather here to witness Starship operations. It's estimated that this area could attract 15,000 visitors each month to watch SpaceX rocket launches from Boca Chica Beach. Consequently, many restaurants, hotels, and other services have been developed to cater to the massive influx of tourists. Next year, as the frequency of Starship launches continues to go up, the number of visitors will likely grow even more, bringing revenue to both local residents and to Texas's government. These benefits are incredibly important for a state like Texas. As a result, Texas authorities have given considerable support to SpaceX for the development of its Starship program. Cohen said, how Brownsville can help, but also how SpaceX can help Brownsville, I really appreciate that relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship. Texas is a state with regulations and policies that greatly favor companies like SpaceX. After SpaceX arrived, the Texas government introduced many incentives for this company. In 2014, they granted SpaceX a 10-year property tax reduction in exchange for building the spaceport in the state. They later awarded SpaceX $15 million to encourage and help develop infrastructure. Additionally, SpaceX consistently gets significant support from the Texas state government when launching Starship. While federal agencies like the FAA and Fish and Wildlife have impeded SpaceX's Starship missions, the Texas government has often taken actions to support the company. They work to expedite procedures for SpaceX, like road and beach closures during tests or launches, and assist in processing permits for SpaceX's Starship launches. In 2022, when SpaceX faced FAA investigations before its first orbital flight test, the company considered relocating the Starship project to Florida, which would allow it to expand and avoid stricter regulations from federal agencies. At that time, Texas officials took multiple actions to retain SpaceX. This was understandable, as losing SpaceX would be a significant blow.
They stated they'd do everything in their power to help SpaceX and create the best possible conditions for the company to grow, with a long-term goal of making Boca Chica SpaceX's permanent headquarters. And that would allow Texas to continue growing and rise to becoming one of the leading states in the United States. Meanwhile, back in America, the FAA is smothering the National Space Program in this Kafkaesque paperwork. That's Elon's warning to the FAA while sharing a video of China's spacesuits and their plans to get to the moon by 2030. It is truly alarming that China could get there before the U.S. if the FAA continues their stubborn ways, restricting star flights in Texas. We cannot let that happen. Worst case scenario, SpaceX should launch Starship in Florida to ensure its strong development. How many advantages would Starship have if SpaceX launched in Florida? What did Florida's Gov just do with SpaceX's Starship? When the legal barriers are tormenting SpaceX in Texas, particularly environmental restrictions, it's led to frustrations for folks like Elon and Shotwell. First, they were angry with the FAA, and then impatience set in when the FAA replied to SpaceX's evidence in an unsatisfactory, even a false manner. Not just SpaceX we're talking, many members of the House, Senate, and others within the space industry are also pretty displeased with how the agency is handling the situation. Sadly, despite all efforts, the results have not improved much. SpaceX's fifth flight at its starbase is still delayed. The FAA is stubbornly sticking to its guns. And this raises the question of whether future development of Starship can be assured if SpaceX stays in Texas or if they need to move to another site where they can do more frequent launches without having to wait months for permits. Quite frankly, if SpaceX is forced to change up their plans, no place would be more suitable than Florida's coast for Starship's new launch site. While SpaceX has dubbed Texas the gateway to Mars, Florida is considered by the entire space community to be the space hub, as nearly 78% of all rocket launches happen there. In a record-setting year, 72 orbital rockets were launched from Florida's space coast in 2023, surpassing the previous record of 57 launches set in 2022, with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets making up the majority of the missions. Florida's coast has long been the golden land for rocket launches in the U.S., not to mention incentives provided by local government for the busiest launch site. The geographic location is also really ideal for orbital launches. The launch area on the east coast near the equator plays a crucial role. Rockets can safely launch eastward over the vast waters of the Atlantic, and if something goes wrong with a rocket after liftoff, spaceflight operators can land safely in the Atlantic Ocean without endangering the public. SpaceX has taken advantage of this by positioning a floating platform in the Atlantic where the first stage of the Falcon 9 can land after delivering payloads to space. Some rockets also return to Florida's coast where they land just a couple miles from where they were launched minutes earlier. This prime location benefits from Earth's rotation, creating eastward velocity that helps rocket gain momentum during liftoff. This eastward velocity, known as rotational velocity, peaks near the equator, helping rockets accelerate toward their intended orbit. And this saves fuel that would otherwise be used to achieve the appropriate speed. As a result, rockets launched out of Florida can send a heavier spacecraft or satellite into space. Moreover, launching from Florida allows rockets to take advantage of Earth's curvature. As rockets move east, they can use the Earth's curvature to achieve altitude more efficiently. Those are the geological advantages, but what about the environmental regulations at the launch sites in Florida? Are they easier than those in Texas, as we might think? Okay, so if SpaceX were to launch Starship from the NASA Lease Launch Facilities in Florida, the delays in permits would probably improve. According to what Elon has previously revealed, SpaceX already received environmental approval for Starship launches from Kennedy, and the company's resumed work on a launch site for Starship LC-39A adjacent to the pad currently used by Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Therefore, it can be said that once SpaceX completes the Starship launch tower at LC-39A, Starship could quickly start launching from there. However, it's still unclear whether the previous environmental assessment for Starship at Kennedy will need to be updated to account for the vehicle's current config, which has evolved significantly since that assessment got complete. Nevertheless, the FAA's oversight at this location is significantly reduced. This is because the Florida coast includes legally established launch complexes already operated by NASA. The U.S. government has built, operated, and maintained satellite infrastructure there since the 1950s. The majority of demand and use of these sites traditionally came from U.S. civil and military government agencies. After the Challenger disaster, a White House decision in 86 allowed launch customers to bid directly from launch vehicle manufacturers, who would then rent the launch facilities from NASA or the U.S. Air Force. 
The launch pad industry, which is the focus of this regulation, has also made progress. Commercial launch operations began with a goal of providing flexible and cost-effective facilities for both existing and new launch vehicles. As the commercial launch pad industry began, commercial launch companies primarily based their launch ops at federal launch sites operated by the Department of Defense and NASA. The federal launch site provides the advantage of existing launch infrastructure and range safety services. Launch companies like SpaceX, ULA, and Blue Origin can receive several services from federal launch sites, including radar, tracking and telemetry, flight termination, and other launch services. Today, most commercial launches still happen from federal launch sites. However, this model may change as other launch sites, like private ones such as SpaceX's Starbase, become more prevalent. Whether a rocket launches from a government or private launch site, the launch operator is still responsible for the ground and flight safety under its FAA license. The simpler process is when safety rules, procedures, and practices combined with the safety functions of the government's federal range, such as NASA's launch facilities, have already been reviewed by the FAA and found to meet most of the FAA's safety concerns. In contrast, when launching from a non-governmental site, the launch operator's responsibility for ground and flight safety becomes more critical. In the absence of government range oversight, each launch operator is responsible for proving the adequacy of their ground and flight safety to the FAA. That's why SpaceX conducts Starship launches at NASA lease facilities. The FAA's authority at those sites is significantly reduced compared to what we're seeing in Texas. Aside from the more streamlined permit process, Florida's government is also warmly welcoming private rocket launch companies to the Space Coast, especially SpaceX. Last year, Florida Gov Ron DeSantis signed a space-related bill. The new law could protect Elon and other spaceflight companies from lawsuits over accidents causing injury or death to crew members. While this law might not exactly relate to environmental permits, we know Ron DeSantis has been a strong advocate for the state space sector and has also supported the Trump admin in removing some of those space regulations. It's hard not to believe that the Florida government is quietly supporting Elon and SpaceX with regulatory benefits rather than just lip service. With all these factors, Florida Space Coast has proven to be the ideal place for SpaceX to do multiple launches right now without too much concern about the FAA. SpaceX has to change, and Starship needs to launch quickly, or else the U.S. could lag behind China in the race to the moon in the next few years. China's space program is developing systematically in a consistent and integrated manner. Their missions don't seem to face serious technical issues that other projects have encountered, or perhaps we're just not told about them. Regardless, China's got a strategic plan to build a space economy and become the global leader in space exploration. The South Pole of the Moon has been designated as the site for a future international lunar research station, which is led by China. They intend to explore and then mine resources from asteroids and celestial bodies like the Moon using lunar ice and any other useful space resources available within the solar system. China's goal is to explore the moon first, followed by near-Earth objects, then later move on to Mars, the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and then the moons of Jupiter. They plan to use stable gravitational points in space called Lagrange points for other space stations. Out of China's next steps in this strategy, the Chang'e 7's robotic mission is scheduled to launch in 2026. It will land on the sunlit rim of the Shackleton Crater near the moon's south pole. The rim of this large crater has a point of continuous sunlight in an area where the sun's angle creates long shadows obscuring much of the landscape. This is a bold move, as the U.S. also has ambitions to establish bases on the moon's south pole, Shackleton Crater being prime real estate. A later mission, Chang'e's 8, currently planned no later than 2028, aims to mine ice and other resources, demonstrating that they can be used to support human outposts. Both Chang'e 7 and 8 are considered part of the ILRS and will set the stage for China's impressive exploration program. Compared to China's swift and decisive actions, Starship, the key player in getting astronauts to the moon, is being shackled by the FAA for reasons no one recognizes. Honestly, it is quite disheartening to see parts of the U.S. government holding back the country's progress. This delay is an embarrassment, to say the least. While NASA's timeline for getting back to the moon may slip even further, China could carry out their plans to send humans to the moon by 2030. Indeed, some commenters have wondered if this Asian superpower might actually beat the U.S. in the race to return to the moon. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.